vinyl friends and vinyl community, it's Brian from Brian's Vinyl Records and I'm here to do a contest entry for Dylan at Noble Records who has hit 7,000 subs. Holy crap. I was pretty excited when recently I made it to 200 subs. 7,000 subs? Cheers, man. Alright, so Dylan is having a contest for obviously a major milestone for his channel. Uh, Dylan, if you don't know, is a avid record collector and a seller. He started doing pop-up shows and selling collections that he would buy, and it's turned into a full-time business, and he opened up his own brick-and-mortar store recently in Matthews, North Carolina. Real cool. Super happy for you, Dylan. Awesome stuff. 7,000 subs, great. So this is going to be my contest entry. I found Dylan, gosh, I don't even remember how I found Dylan. I think I was recommended him on Instagram. And so I went and checked out his Instagram page and really liked it and started following it. Followed his whole path from going to pop-ups to doing, uh, building the brick and mortar to opening the brick and mortar to all that stuff. It's been really fun to watch the journey. So congrats, Dylan. That's pretty awesome. Looking forward to seeing what you do next and how you grow that business because it looks like you're doing pretty well. So seven questions for 7,000 subs. Let's get going. First question is your best finds. So I'm going to start with finds I had on Discogs. Uh, I have certain grails that I look for, but I am one of those people who only pays a certain price for four things. Uh, my most I've ever paid for an album is $55. I uh, haven't gone near that on most of my things, so I'm always looking for a good deal. And I found a really good deal on two albums on Discogs that were high on my want list. This first one is Poison's Native Tongue. I found this in Venezuela, of all places, and uh, it was really kind of a pain in the butt to get this here. Uh, Venezuelan Customs stopped it for almost a week and I had to actually message the guy who uh, I bought it from. He had to go to customs and figure out what was going on. Once he did that, it started moving through customs. Then it got stopped in Puerto Rico for US customs and that was there for about a week. But then it started moving again and it finally made it here. So it took about a month or maybe a little more than a month to finally get to me but uh, was super pumped when it finally came and super excited to have it. This is my favorite Poison album. I saw them live on this tour when they came through Minnesota, was super excited about it. And I only paid $17 for this copy, which is insane because I've seen it go for as much as 50 or $60 online. So super pumped to have found this on Discogs and to have paid so little for it. The other one I found on Discogs is another grail of mine that I've been wanting forever and I've been hoping and hoping and hoping that they would do a reissue. It hasn't come. I'm still hoping that next year there will be a reissue for its anniversary, 30th anniversary. We'll see. I, I'm hoping since they did that with their previous album that they're going to do it with this one as well. I'm talking about Skid Row's Slave to the Grind. This is the Korean pressing. I had to go to Korea to get this, but super happy I did. Again. I look for a good price. This one dropped down to 20 bucks. It ended up costing me $24 total after shipping to get this here. Again, it took approximately, well, he didn't ship it right away, so it took approximately two to three weeks. Uh, or no, I take that back. It took took about three weeks for it to get here from Korea. The cool part was is he, he put a track on it, so I was able to watch it go through the Korean mail, get to the US, and then come over here. So that was really, really fun. But uh, super pumped to have this. Looking forward to a repress. This is the censored version. This is Korea. So it's got the Beggar's Day uh, song on it instead of the Get the F Out song, and, which is fine for me because that's the one I grew up with. I didn't even know that Get the Fuck Out existed until uh, probably a year or two after I had found this album in the first place. So I'm, I'm used to this version of it. I will hope that when they do the reissue, they put the uncensored version out as the reissue. Now, if we're strictly talking about what you found in the wild, I found two things that I'm really excited about. The first one is I found this twice, Poison Flesh and Blood, uh, and cheap. I think I paid $15 for this one, and I think I paid $15 for my other copy. I bought them both because you just don't see 
poison uh, flesh and blood sitting in bins at record stores very often. So I picked this up recently at Ramblon Records in Shakopee, Minnesota. They had a, a massive collection of really great 90s metal, hair stuff, uh, glam, pop, all sorts of stuff. I walked out of there spending probably $100 and $150 when all was said and done on the records they had there and I had to leave a bunch behind so but really excited I picked this up I couldn't pass it up on the price uh, this is an expensive one to get it's just hard to find so really excited about that and of course this one I picked up at my local down in the valley store which is one of my favorite stores to shop at this is the offspring splinter this is I think only got two pressings officially out there and this is one of them this is an original press uh, US pressing of the album and uh, just love this love this album it's a great album so super pumped to have found this in the wild and picked this up next question best song ever written so uh, obviously this is subjective to everyone but one of my all-time favorite songs is from this guy right here Michael Jackson he didn't write it uh, Sadia Garrett I believe wrote it but the song is Man in the Mirror. I absolutely love Man in the Mirror. And so it's always been one of my favorite tracks and one of my favorite songs. So I'm going to nominate this one. And then as a, a, a second one, I just want to give a shout out to this. Um, this is Leanne Rimes, Spitfire, a less well-known album of hers. This came out in, I believe, 2013. There's a song on here she wrote. This was all during the time when uh, she was married to her first husband and going through an affair with her current husband. And she had a song on here written called, uh, let's see if I can get that. It's called, uh, I don't think it's going to focus, but it's called What Have I Done? And I mean, if you just listen to the lyrics of that song, it's unbelievably uh, just emotional. Uh, truthful and all that stuff uh, kind of the struggle she went through as she was you know having an affair on her husband with another married man and kind of that type of thing but uh, just an absolutely fantastic song uh, very well written next album uh, how do you keep track of your collection so I like most people keep track of my collection on discogs I found this early, thankfully, in my record collecting days, and uh, it's very helpful for me because I am able to um, not only, you know, have a catalog, running catalog of what I have on vinyl, but when I'm out doing stuff in the wild, uh, it won't even show very well, but when I'm doing stuff in the wild, I'm able to pull this out and make sure that I'm not buying something that I already have. Uh, which I, I don't collect duplicates of much of anything. Uh, there are very few things I have duplicate of, and they're mostly albums that I hold dear. But um, this has been a, a godsend for me because I've almost bought in the same record multiple times. So I do catalog everything I have on Discogs, and that goes for vinyl, CDs, and cassettes as well. Uh, one record that you'll never sell. Um, I, I don't really know if I have any records. I don't sell records anyway, but I don't know that I, if the price was right, I would, wouldn't get rid of something. But this is one that's special to me. This is um, The Offspring's Ixnay on the Ombre album. Now, this isn't the one I want, so if I ever come across the original artwork of this, I would happily trade it for uh, this you know, anniversary edition. Uh, this is the last album that I listened to with my brother before his untimely death in a car accident uh, when he was 17 years old and I was 19 years old. He had just bought this album uh, a few months before the accident and we both enjoyed the band. So we both listened to it together uh, in our room. We shared a room. And uh, so it always has had a special place in my heart. I still have his CD that he bought. It was um, recovered from the car crash and I have that uh, saved as a memento. But uh, I always am on the lookout for the original cover that isn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, I've seen it before and it's been out there for around 40 or so dollars, but I also see it for $20 online. I just haven't gotten up the uh, ability to purchase it yet. So we'll see. Eventually I will get the original cover and then that will be the one that I won't sell. Uh, next one, favorite music record related documentary. Uh, there's so many great ones out there. I didn't know what to do, but I had this handy, so I'm going to go with 
Metallica is a year and a half in the life of. This is really cool. Uh, when this came out, I bought it on VHS and really enjoyed it. It's a look at the making of the Black Album uh, and also the tour that uh, went afterwards. So I think the Black Album took them around six months to record and then uh, they toured for a year afterwards uh, on that tour. So it's a documentary that follows the whole creation process and the tour. Very cool documentary. Favorite record you received as a gift? So I don't ask for records as a gifts anymore. I do put them on my wish list for my family for Christmas, uh, but I only put ones that I know I'm not going to purchase. I, I just buy records a lot, so I don't want them to go out and find something and I've already bought it, so I feel bad about that. But when I was just getting started collecting records again, I had something on my wish list that my parents went out and got for me, which I was just thrilled about, and that's this right here. This is the Pantera Complete Studio Albums box set. It comes with all the albums. You've got uh, Cowboys from Hell, uh, Vulgar Display of Power, Far Beyond Driven, um, Great Southern Trend Kill, and Reinventing the Steel all in this one box set. It's absolutely fantastic. It sounds awesome. This was issued by Rhino Records and it is just a great package. Every vinyl in here comes on a different color, uh, most of them to match kind of the cover art colors. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but this is definitely one of my favorite gifts that I've received vinyl wise. All right, last question is what is your listening ritual? So I work from home which affords me the ability to listen to music all day long on vinyl, which is cool. Before I had to use streaming media and headphones and things like that, but now that I'm home, I have a, a turntable set up in my office and I spin all day. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see that I'm posting what I'm listening to at the time. So really cool, really fun, and um, that's kind of what I do. After work is done, um, if I have time, I'm usually spending it with my family, uh, running my kids to sporting events or things like that. If I'm home and have time, I like to just sit down, put on some music down here, and either work on a puzzle or you know, just hang out, chill in my living room, listening to uh, songs on my Fluence uh, turntable. So that's kind of my listening ritual. It's an all-day type thing and really enjoy it. So there you go, that is my entry for Dylan's Contest. I will leave a link below to Dylan's Contest so you can join if you're interested in it. Congratulations once again, Dylan, on the 7,000 subs. Really enjoy your channel, enjoy your podcast, everything you do, it's just been a great time. Hopefully one of these days I'll make it out to North Carolina. I have a buddy who lives in Charlotte and I'm hoping that I can bring the family out to Charlotte one of these days to visit them and Hopefully when I'm there, I can come check out the uh, brick and mortar store. I'm really excited about it. But thanks again for running the contest. Good luck to everyone who's entered. And thanks for watching, Vinyl Friends. Until then, keep spinning.